this is the big one. Are you ready? Because tonight, you better put your seatbelt on. It's going to be a great night here at the Southwest Believers Convention. And I'm going to tell you, from this moment on, don't go anywhere. Stay with us the rest of the night. There's going to be a lot of great things that you're not going to want to miss. Hello, everybody. My name is Tim Fox. Welcome to the Southwest Believers Convention. Once again tonight, I'm going to start with my good friend, Greg Stevens. But we also have an addition hey, tonight. Brought we, brought, we brought help. <laughs> Michelle, who actually, a lot of you that watch EMIC know Michelle. And she helps Greg. She does a lot of the opens. And we're tired of Greg giving stuff away, so we brought Michelle in because she's not going to give stuff away. All right. See ya. Thank you. Welcome, Michelle. Thank you. It's so good to be with you here live at the big one. The big one. And yeah. I have to say it's been so exciting to see all the faces that are behind the lens. Yeah. So for all of you that are still at home, Come down and see us because we want to see your face. Yeah, we, we do. And, you know, Greg, uh, here in a few minutes, uh, you're going to be talking to some folks over here in the book table area. Dude, Tim, I've got some interesting things. We're going to start talking about uh, letting you see some of the pastors yeah. that come here. Yes. And then people that have come from long distance away. And, uh, and here's the deal. I heard a while ago that people from Dallas and Fort Worth are the largest watchers online right now. So... I'm going to show What's you some people that? that came around the world to get here. So <laughs> yeah, get people on down actually here. Listen, made, a, we don't, made a sacrifice. Creflo Dollar is what, 7.30? Yeah, yes, he so is. So you still have time. Yes, you do. To anywhere in the metro to, yes, to get down here. You absolutely but do. Isn't it great? To, it is great. We beautified the set a little we bit. We did, there. absolutely. And unfortunately, she's not going to be with us anymore, so it's going to go downhill from here. So that's <laughs> what, what are we going to do? So anyway, hey, listen, tonight, uh, here in just a couple of minutes, you know, we've had some guests on this week from our 1440 services. Today over there, they had a panel discussion with uh, some of the folks that are ministering over there, some of the folks that are in leadership over there. Uh, and we're gonna bring some of those folks in here tonight and talk about what they talked about. Uh, we're gonna have some youth come in behind us here, so don't let it distract you. We're gonna have a good time on this program tonight. Uh, they talked about tech, they talked about um, here? Yeah. music, yeah. they talked about prayer, and they talked about five-fold ministry over there today. So we're going to talk to a couple of those guys tonight. Come on in, guys. Look at you guys. <laughs> I have with me tonight Mary Kurth, uh, Minister. What a great name. I didn't come up with a name like that. <laughs> Timotha or something like I don't know. And Holden Hanley. Uh, these guys were part of the panel discussion today. Mary, we'll start with you. You are a part of the MIC and leadership there and the tech team. You kind of grew up here doing that. I did. You started there. I did. And that's what you guys are trying to do, try to equip these kids and let them know, hey, there's a place for you in ministry right now. Absolutely. Faith is real right now where they're at. And so the whole goal of these breakouts was to give them tools yeah. that they can go home with more than just um, some verses yeah. to stand on, but some, some things, no some practical things of how to use the gift that God's put in them. Yeah. And so that was the whole point to start drawing these gifts out of them and give them resources and connection and people to connect yeah. with that they can hook yeah. up to. Yeah. And the MIC made a place for you to do that. The MIC did. is one of the church, and that's something that we want you as a church and a ministry. Yeah, that's why exactly. I wanted to do this tonight, to give you a I sense of them. how you can reach the next generation. MIC gave you a place to do that. They gave you a place to come in and start helping, run camera, do whatever, and now you run the show. Yeah, I found my place volunteering. And yeah. now this is my 18th convention to be a part of. Oh my goodness. I'm blessed. She started when she was 10. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I know she started when she I was, was young. 14. Yeah. 14. Yeah. I wasn't far off. Now, Minister. Yes, sir. I, I love that. Again, I love that. Uh, you are a rapper. Yes, sir. That's something I can't do either. Uh, but maybe you can like teach me. Trying. Maybe yeah, I, I don't think I can do that. Yeah. But you were in the world. You were doing what you're doing now with music. You were doing it in the world. Yes, sir. And God got a hold of you. Yes, Talk, changed my life. Changed your life. Talk about that and how now you're using that Jeremy. talent. 
before Jesus. Right. Well, my name, it was Sinister at the time. S-Y-N-I-S-T-A. Oh, yeah. That and, sounds And bad. so the Lord knocked the letter off, changed it. M-Y-N-I-S-T-A. <laughs> and now, so, uh, you That's know, back then I was rapping the lifestyle I was living, you know, drugs, uh, crime, all that stuff. Yeah. But now I'll rap the word of faith, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Where do you get the inspiration? Where do you get the words? Time with the Lord. You know, um, of course, you know, my spiritual fathers, our forefathers, Brother Cole, yes. Pastor Mark Hankins is my yes. spiritual father. Yes. Uh, I mean, all of those. And but it's time with the Lord, prayer in the word and faith comes by hearing, hearing yes. by the word of God, you know. And, and praise and worship is really important to all generations, but especially this generation, is it not? Yeah, and it's relevant, you know, I mean, it's relevant to this generation, the word of faith, even in the arts. Yes. Even in praise and worship, I mean, because faith is going to come and it's going, we're going to be able to access the grace of God even when music is presented. And I bet you see in your t in the time you minister and when you sing, do you see the power of God move um, in these, in these times with these kids? Yeah, lives are changed, um, salvations of course, people filled with the Holy Spirit, bodies healed, um, Praise joy, the Lord. supernatural joy in the Holy Ghost. That's and we great. have a great time, Jesus and, is And born. kids can do that, yeah, that's, that's the whole idea. You know, these, there's a place for all these young people. I call them kids, they're really young people. Uh, uh, they're all kids to me, but there's a place for them. You know, there's also a place for these kids in prayer. Uh, Holden Hanley is with me tonight as well. He's part of our prayer team at KCM yes, and the MIC. Uh, what did you share today in terms of prayer and how, how these kids and these young people can be a part of that? You know, we made prayer real practical. Yeah. We talked about, we went to, to the basic fundamentals of prayer, which at its roots is communion with God. It's coming boldly into the throne of grace, knowing that you have a father that accepts you, knowing that you have a father that loves you, knowing that you're not praying to just uh, 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 something in midair, but your prayers are heard yeah. and answered. Yeah. And we did our best and we, 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 we made it organic. We gave them opportunities not just to learn, but to apply what they're learning. We yeah. gave them opportunities to ask questions. We gave them opportunities. We had somebody filled with the Holy Spirit, spoken tongues for the first time today. Wow. And it was a phenomenal, phenomenal time. Yeah. You know, you cannot be successful in any kind of ministry, church, whatever it is, without prayer. Absolutely. Prayer is actually the foundation. And in, you've heard Brother Copeland say many times, the key to every successful Christian endeavor begins with prayer and it, that's no different it's church ministry youth it, well if you don't pray there's you don't really have a prayer so to speak Absolutely. do you <laughs> not at all none yeah and you have been, done this for a long time and and so you you're you're a pro at this right i'm learning you learned it from I'm Pastor still learning. Terry, right? I mean, I Pastor did. Terry was your was your I, mentor. I call I call Pastor Terry the mother of my prayer life. Yeah. I learned how to. I my 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 love for prayer started right here in pre-service prayer. Praise the Lord. So and it's yeah. it's an honor to be able to minister prayer at the Southwest Believers Convention. Yeah, and she's she's coming up in about 15 minutes. So Absolutely. Pastor Terry will be here as she yeah. has after, at the end of our program every night. You guys enjoying this? Did y'all enjoy it today? Yeah. What a great group of kids we've got here, uh, and they're going to have a great time tonight. In fact, uh, the gentleman that's speaking to them tonight is going to be with me just a little bit later in our program, some guy named Todd White. I, I don't know. I, uh, uh, I may keep these guys around. This is great. I love, studio audience, I love this. It's great. Now, I understand uh, that we've, been, we've had our crews out throughout the week, the, uh, the first two days, like the week, you know, it's only two days, but they've been talking to people, par partners and friends, talking about how this ministry and how this meeting's blessed them. Let's just take a look at what people are saying just on day two here at Southwest Believers Convention. Um, it was important for me to be here uh, just because after recently rededicating my life to Christ, they showed me like a whole new walk. You know, like before it was just like salvation and repentance, but then came like authority and dominion and speaking to things. So I felt like God definitely had a word for me here, so I had to come. We come every year and it just helps us get through the year. I can't imagine not coming. We come, like I said, every year my daughter and I come. She's been coming since she was about eight years old and now she's 20, almost 21. She's in college, but we just kind of made a pact that every year, no matter where she is in the world, that we would meet at the Believers Convention in Fort Worth once a year. And so we're doing that. We've always, of course, been, you know, very supportive of, of the Copa Ministries, but um, there's something just about that corporate get together when people come together as, as, a, as a whole. I mean, we've watched it on the internet for a lot of years, but there's nothing like being in the, in the atmosphere of, of the convention. It's, it's incredible. Um, it was important for me to be here to build my faith and also for the next steps of what God has in store for me. It's really important, especially, I feel like this is like, I was just sharing with my mom, but this is like a faith boot camp. You know, it's just like a faith marathon. So 
I need that. There's such a building, and I think just coming together and just uniting that faith, and that's kind of what, what we've been wanting and needing more of too, you know, because there's so much, I know God is wanting to do so much through us, and, and it's just coming together and getting that, and you just get so inspired and built up and, and just like ready to get out there then, you know? It's like anticipation. You know something's going to happen, and everybody's just wired for the presence of God to come and to be a part of it. I'd say stop wasting the time thinking about it and just come because you're going to get refreshed and polished on some things you already knew about, but then I feel like the Lord's also going to touch them in some places that they didn't really know about as well. If you're like waiting to come, you should just definitely come and stop waiting to come. <laughs> Okay, I am over in the partner section of the exhibit hall. You know, covenant partners have always been a very important thing to this ministry. Matter of fact, I would say it's, it's the foundation of it. I want to introduce you to a pastor of a congregation, but more than just a pastor, Jeff Backer. Jeff is also, you started off in the, in the television industry and movies and a traveling evangelist, and now you pastor a church across the Metroplex in Rockwell. Tell me a little bit about your church and about you and, and uh, I want to introduce you to our partners around the world. Amen. Well, we're over there in Rockwall, Texas uh, at Great Faith Church. We were going to call it Little Faith Church, but we decided to go with Great Faith. You know? <laughs> you know, there's something about achieving and encouraging people to great faith, to believe for miracles, to believe for great things. And I believe we're the last generation. I believe we're the generation that will usher in the second coming. Yeah, and I believe there's going to be miracles in this hour like never before. And we want to be on the cutting edge. The reason I wanted to, the people to meet you is because I hear all the time, where do I find a church like this meeting or like EMIC, you know, Eagle Mountain Church where, I, where I'm at? How do I find something like that? And they're out there. They really are. And so I wanted to introduce you, first of all, tonight to one here in East Dallas, Metro, and you need to know that he's a partner church and they believe like we do. And, and you need to go to the website, find out all about us. But tell me about what's happening at your church. I guess you're having an anniversary. We're having our second year anniversary in our building this Sunday. Wonderful. And I'll tell you what, this is a church that God was just, I mean, right in the middle of. There, there has been so many miracles and faith built this church. Yeah. Faith has done so many things. I mean, everybody told us there's no buildings in town. You're not going to be able to find a building. But God had already told us there's a building. And, you know, a lady called us, and she had the most perfect building right on the main road in Rockwall. And I tell you what, God is a miracle-working God. Yes. And you know that. I mean, I, I, back when you were a pastor, I prayed over your eyes. It, well, I'll just quickly say that he was at our church in San Diego, California, and I grew up colorblind all my life and something happened and I was frozen there for a minute and I woke up kind of in the middle of church and, and I could see colors. You know what? God's just a big God. And, and faith is what it's all about. You know, and faith. You do that for anybody. Won't you? Oh, absolutely. God's not a respecter of persons. He's looking for somebody. He's just looking for some faith. He's looking all over this, this world for people who will just believe him, that he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Yeah, amen. Amen. All right. Once again, website, church name, how we can, how they, service times, how they can find you. Well, it, the website is G, like in great. And then F A I T H, gfaith.org. And uh, Sundays at 10 30 and Wednesdays at 7 p.m., we get in the word. If you like Brother Copeland, I grew up uh, under Brother Copeland and uh, I worked for Brother Copeland right there at KCM. And uh, I'll tell you what, we have a church where what you see at these conventions, that's what we have here. Great Faith Church. Pastor Jeff Backer, I recommend him. Bless you, brother. Oh, Thank you for being with us. Good to be with you. Thank you, sir. Now, he came from just across the metro, but let me introduce you to a couple who came from a church in Singapore, a church you've heard of probably called New Creation Church. Samantha, tell, tell everybody who you are. Hi, I'm Samantha. I'm Anand. And they have been watching all the way in Singapore. Yes. And you came all the way from Singapore for the, the big one, yes, the Southwest the big Believers big Convention. Big okay, so tell me what you think so far. Oh, it's awesome. It's so awesome. God is so good. 
Yes, it's, it, it's just, it's just, uh, just takes your words away. <laughs> right now, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's, it's been full of faith yes. for, for what we came yes. and we are beginning to believe for, for so much more. Yes. You started out and you told me you started watching something we were trying out called the home group. Yes. And it ministered to you and you had people and you were watching it yes, together. Yes, yes, It was so good. The home group is so good. It's, it's so natural. It's like you just answer the questions that the people ask and it's so biblical, it's so helpful, it's so real. I, I don't know, I think it's so awesome. Everybody should be watching And, and it. you came all the way because yeah, of it. Yes, to tell you yeah, guys. Yeah. <laughs> we, we came, of course, for uh, the convention and to, to feed feed on, you know, uh, whatever message, faith message that they're putting up. Yes, mm. yes. So, what's, you have a favorite thing you've heard right now? Um, I, uh, all good, all good. Praise the Lord, all good. Perfect, yes. perfect. Well, I'm glad you came all the way from Singapore to, uh, and, and here's members of the home group all right here, Cynthia and everybody. Yes. Okay, come, come hug everybody. Yes. So, it's big family reunion time here at the Southwest Believers Convention. Let me just send it, because we lost control over here. Let me send it back to you guys over on the set. Thank you for joining us. Oh, I like it when they lose control because we're about to lose control here too, and that's okay. We don't want to be in control, do we? I brought, uh, I brought our cheering section back with us uh, because I thought that you would enjoy having them here as we talk to Todd White uh, tonight for the last part of this program. How are you, my friends? Good to see you. Doing really good. Yeah. Really, really amazing. How are you? <laughs> I know you. I'm great. I'm great. And I know you minister a lot of places. But I, you, you have a special place in your heart for this ministry here, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Talk about that and these, these kids here. Yeah. I just, ever since I've come here a couple of years ago, just something completely unique, just totally different. Yeah. And uh, I remember the first year when I came in, I, I saw a lot of, a lot of kids kind of cross-armed and, and just, yeah, okay, we've heard this. Yeah. And then Jesus, and right. then he comes. And yeah. uh, without the presence of God, it actually is no fun. Yeah. And so what I enjoy the most, I guess, is God's presence, touching the kids, touching the youth. You know, for 34 years of my life, no one ever shared the gospel with me. No one shared why I was in the world. I had no clue. And then Jesus showed up and changed my life. And so if I can make an impact on anybody, changing their life now, yeah. so that God's presence can transform them now. Yes. They'll make an impact on eternity for... You talk about the presence of God. I know people are listening like, what I would love, I'd love to feel the presence of God. How, how does one go about doing that? Well, I mean, with me, uh, honestly, it's every day, every morning, wake up earlier than everybody else, get alone, tuck away with my Bible, put on some worship music, get on my face, and just love Jesus and thank Him. Most of the time that I spend in a prayer place or in that in that uh, secret place yeah. is in time of thanks, thanksgiving, glorifying Him, thanking Him for what He's done. And I would say it's probably, gosh, it's it's probably 10% asking and, and 90% in thankfulness and yeah. just learning how to commune with the Holy Spirit so yeah. that every day, all day from that point on, His presence, He's as close as the mention of His name. Mm. You know, a lot of times people are waiting to feel his presence instead of know him. And knowing him and feeling him are two totally different things. I'm totally for feeling him. But if I don't know him, I can be deceived thinking that he's not there when I don't feel him. And I'll never be deceived in there. And always know that he's as close as the mention of his name. Absolutely. That's absolutely the truth. Now, a lot of people out there hurting. And I know you encounter people like that all the time. Every day. In your ministry. Every day. People Every day. that are hurting. People that, uh, that think they know him, but they don't really know him. Uh, you know, Dean Sykes, who spoke last night, you know, we, uh, we had a report that there were several people, several kids that said, you know what, I was thinking about killing myself. Yep. And you probably encounter that all the time. All the time. Uh, what's the answer to that? And, you know, with, I thought about killing myself my whole life. I thought about being done, you know, specifically from, gosh, I would say my early 20s to, yeah. you know, 34. Knowing about him and knowing what he's done is amazing, but but knowing him and believing that what he's done 
is enough to bring me back to a loving father so that I can have relationship with the father. Mm -hmm. So you have all these things that are out there. You have drugs, you have sexual immorality, you have the whole twisted gamut of everything, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life, all of it. Everything is solved in that one name, Jesus. And so when I came to realize that God didn't just forgive me, but he forgot everything that I wish I'd never done. You know, I, I, all these things, I wish I could go back and change them, but I can't. And so when I came to Jesus and I realized that regret, guilt, shame, and condemnation were completely annihilated on the cross. And so when I see what he's done, who he is in me and who I am in him, it transforms the way I think so that I can be transformed in the renewing of my mind so that I can be renewed in the spirit of my mind so that I can know his perfect will. Yeah. And his perfect will for me first is to know the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Amen. And so to know his love is everything because when you know his love, what he has done for you, what he wants to do through you and what he's already done to you changes the way that you respond to people everywhere you go and in everything you do. And honestly, this whole suicidal thing and I mean, it's, it's rampant. It's all over the world. It's not just in a certain section of the world. Correct. It's everywhere. And it's really attacking young people yeah. and making them think that their life's not worth living. You know, you break up, you have a boyfriend, girlfriend break up. All of a sudden, I don't want to live anymore because if I can't have them, because what happens is the boyfriend or the girlfriend took first place instead of Jesus. Yes. And so they took that place that only Jesus is reserved to take. Yes. My wife can't even have that place in my heart. That's true. I love her with everything that I am. Yeah. But if I sacrifice my relationship with Jesus to have her be first place in my life, she has now become savior in my life. Yes. And if she has a bad day, I have a bad day. If she has yes. a good day, I hopefully have a good day. Yes. My life will revolve around her. But if my life is focused and centered on Christ in me, the hope of glory, everything you know, changes. As Christians, we know that the devil hates everything about us. He, sure he hates does. everything we stand for. Uh, and particularly this this generation, you know, he's made a play for these kids yep. in this generation. Yep. Uh, and I know this ministry is committed as you are uh, to reaching these these kids in this generation yep. because there's a powerful ministry in here, that's right. isn't there? Yep. And that's that's what we're trying to protect. That's and right. we're trying to we're trying to keep the devil from stealing that. Yep. And 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 being able to equip them is what we're called to do. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when you minister uh, to youth. What is one of the things that you have seen over the years, the one key thing that they deal with that is really difficult to, to, for them to get over and get, get past? Well, I mean, I believe, honestly, I believe it's, I don't believe it's any different for the youth than it is for the body of Christ totally because I minister to all. And 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt is identity. Oh yeah. And it, it is, and it's in everyone. And it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church, how long you've been a Christian, it doesn't matter. See, what the enemy wants you to do is he wants you to get comfortable in just believing that Jesus died for you and he raised from the dead for you and that you're saved. And he wants you to get comfortable in that place and never knowing that there's a place to grow up into him in all things so that we as the church can reveal the manifold wisdom of God to the powers and principalities. Yeah. He, the, the enemy works night and day. He works overtime to try to get people to never dive into who God's created them to be. Yeah. He wants them to be satisfied with just the finished work at conversion instead of growing up into him after that. He yeah. wants to actually put it into the mind of the youth and to the mind of the body of Christ that they have a pastor that's gonna feed them yeah. so they don't need to daily feed. You bet. And that is demonic strategy set up to help, just to, to push you away from God to where you have the form of, of God, yes. but you deny the power thereof to transform a life. I gotta believe uh, that there are people that's watching us right now that as you've been speaking, they're saying, gosh, he's talking about me and I'm in that place. If you would take a minute, look right in that camera and minister to the people that are watching yeah. that are just saying, hey, you know what? My life's not worth living. I don't yeah. know what you guys are talking about, but I'd like to know what it is. Yeah, okay. Well, first off, if you believe your life's not worth living, if you're depressed, you're angry, you're bitter, you're ashamed, or you're afraid, it's the devil because the devil thinks that way. So what he's trying to do is he's trying to create his mind inside of you so that you can have a heart that loves God, but with your mind, you're far away from God. He wants to try to gray you out and fog you up in this area so that where you can never really hear clearly or see clearly who you've been created to be. So I'd love to pray for you, but you have to take the first step and you have to dive in. You have to open the word, get on your knees. Just today, I did it again. I'm this afternoon. I'm. I'm like, Lord, I, I've been on vacation for three weeks. I haven't ministered for three weeks and 
I don't even have a clue of what I'm going to say, but I know that if I get on my knees right now with you, I know that you'll speak to my heart and you have everything right here inside of this book. So I opened up to the chapter of Ephesians 1 and I started to read and I started to fellowship with God and He just started to open my eyes to new revelation and just a new understanding of who He is because God wants to give us all the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. And when He gives us that, that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him starts to energize and invigorate and completely strengthen you from the inside out to where your heart can take you places that your brain can't fit. And even though you're trying to read and you can't get it because your brain, your heart is taking you in there. So believe that the Holy Spirit's taking you in there. So God, I thank Thank you in the name of Jesus for everyone watching that God, you are as close as the mention of the name Jesus. All hell trembles at the mention of the name Jesus. So Father, I thank you by the authority of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We break off all the demonic strongholds that are trying to stop people from hearing his voice. Jesus, thank you that you'd speak loud and clear, that you speak, I love you to each person watching. Father, thank you that nobody's outside of this, that Jesus, you're omnipresent and everywhere at once. You are in their house the same as you're right here in this building. I thank you that from Fort Worth, Texas to wherever people are watching all around the world, you would transform change and touch people's hearts in a way that you've never touched them before. God, thank you that they'd wake up tomorrow completely brand new people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you for doing that, sir. Yeah. Thank you for doing that. Uh, You may or may not know much about Todd's ministry. It's called Lifestyle Christianity. Let me show you a quick clip of of Todd's ministry and we'll come back and close things out. Take a look at this. Some we get overwhelmed with God in such a way that there is no turning around. There's nowhere to go. It's only pursuit. It's only running forward. We've limited ourselves saying, I'm called to this, I'm not called to that. That's your ministry, this is mine. And what if it's not about ministry? What if it's just about Jesus? This is going to be the place for Lifestyle Christianity University. Way to smile. Lifestyle Christianity University. Yep. You saw the website right there at the very end. And I'm gonna ask you to do two things. I wanna ask you one, pray for Todd and his ministry. As you can tell tonight, this is a powerful, life-changing, world-changing ministry. And he'll tell you, he'll be the first to tell you it's not about him. Right. Well, the second thing I want you to pray about doing is supporting what he's doing. He just purchased a piece of property here in the Fort Worth, Dallas area. And it's going to be a place where Jesus is exalted and lives are changed. I can just tell you about that right away. So just those two things, pray for Todd and pray about supporting him. I'm not telling you have to, pray about it. And I believe God will tell you what to do. You know, I love that (laughs) name, Lifestyle Christianity, because Christianity done right becomes your life. That's right. Because Jesus, it's all about him, man. It is. It, it is Jesus. It is. Amen. And if he's in you, it's going to come out. Yeah. Right. And that becomes your lifestyle and everybody should see him. You yeah, should amen. reflect him every day. And brother, what I love about you and your ministry is every time I look in your eyes, I see him. Yes. Because I know him. Yes. And I know he's in you. Yeah. And amen. brother Copeland does too. Absolutely. I, I, every time brother Copeland, in fact, I know we're almost out of time. We were in Arkansas just a couple of two or three months ago shooting broadcast. We had a break. We were sitting down. As we do, Brother Copeland was talking. He said, and two names he brought up, Todd White and Michael Koulianos. Yeah. He said, those two guys inspire him. And, I'm, and he, those were his words, not mine. So I just, you know, uh, thank you for what you do. Thank and, you. I, you know, I know it's, you know it's not about you. And he'll be the first to tell you that. But, uh, right. and it's not about us. It's about Jesus. Jesus. And Amen. so uh, we're going to turn this thing over to Pastor Terry in the pre-service prayer. Uh, she's coming up in just a, just a couple of seconds. Uh, and don't you go anywhere tonight because Creflo Dollar is coming back tonight to preach. And then pray for this youth service tonight because Todd White's going to go over there tonight. And I can promise you that that place is going to be lit. Listen, here's it's the deal. You've lit. still. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> and, 
and you st if you're in the Dallas Metro, yes, you still have time. You do have time to get to here. To get here. Yes. What's it worth to get your kids here? Yes. Tonight, right? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Bring them. Well, how much time I got left, guys? Not much time. <laughs> Ten seconds. Ten seconds. All right. Hey, listen. On behalf of all of us here at KCM and the youth, remember, God loves you and we love, we love you. you. I'll say it. Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Lord. Enjoy the service.